In my previous buffer overflow video, I introduced the stack, which is a runtime data structure that holds local variables, return addresses, and other data. Today, we're going to talk about its security sidekick, the shadow stack, which is a separate stack that holds copies of the return addresses from the original stack. The shadow stack works to nullify buffer overflow attacks by providing a check before using the return address to return to another function. In the normal case, the return address on the original stack is going to be equal to the one on the shadow stack, and will proceed with the program normally. However, if a buffer overflow is attempted, and the return address is overwritten or changed in any way, then the addresses will not match, and the program will crash before any damage is done. We can see right away that the shadow stack mechanism is a strong defense because it's checking for the validity of the return address itself. Before we talk about any more details about the shadow stack though, let's back up and talk about exactly what the shadow stack is trying to achieve. A program is composed of functions which can call and return to each other. If we graph all the functions that call and return to one another, we get what's called a control flow graph. It's called a control flow graph because it tells us the possible ways that program execution, aka control, will flow. In this case, A will call B, B will call C, and then we'll return to B, and finally, back to A. Now, conceptually, what a buffer overflow does is it takes one of these arrows and moves it to point to something else. This is what happens when we overwrite a return address. We're conceptually moving one of these red edges to point somewhere else. We can see why this is dangerous. We get a different control flow graph than the program author intended. The shadow stack attempts to enforce what is known as control flow integrity. Control flow integrity is a fancy phrase that basically means making sure these arrows don't point to other things. There are many different ways that we can try to enforce control flow integrity, but we've only introduced two so far, the shadow stack and stack canaries. They both protect the return edges of the control flow graph. In most cases, the forward edges don't need protection because they're hard-coded into the program itself. Note that these forward edges differ from the return edges because the return edges use these return addresses to determine where they're going. As we learned from before, return addresses are stored on the stack and can be overwritten by buffer overflows. But why do return edges depend on return addresses? It seems like it would be easier if they were also protected like the forward edges. That way, buffer overflows wouldn't be able to overwrite any return address because there would be none. Unfortunately, because of the way functions work, this is just not possible. Consider the following example. Here we see a program with function A that calls function B and then calls C. Function B also calls C. So if we draw the control flow graph, it would look something like this. Notice that C gets called twice from two different functions. Let's say we're running the program and we're about to finish function C. Where do we return to? The answer is that we don't know until the program actually runs. This is exactly why we need the return address to tell us whether we should go back to function B or function A. This is the main reason why return edges are different than forward edges and why I draw them in different colors. Return edges rely on return addresses, whereas forward edges are determined before the program is even run. In fact, if you remember this address based diagram from the DEP video, we can more clearly see the difference between the edge types. The data for the return edges is stored in the stack section, which is writable, while the data for the forward edges is stored in the code section, which is read only. If some of what I just said about control flow graphs went over your head, don't worry, we'll definitely see them again. I know this video is supposed to be about shadow stacks, but I wanted to give a higher level view of what exactly a shadow stack is trying to accomplish. To review, a shadow stack enforces control flow integrity by keeping a copy of the return address and crashes if the return address on the real stack doesn't match the shadow stack. On a control flow graph, that would look like this. The shadow stack makes a copy of the return address and crashes the program if the return address doesn't equal the original value. As always, thanks for watching.